We're here at Electrovox Studios in Hollywood, California. Uh, Woody Jackson, the studio's owner, once again has granted us just an incredible once in a lifetime access to uh, his vault of just historic and irreplaceable gear. So if we're gonna talk about guitar amplifiers, I think it's important to go back to where it all started. So over here on my right, we have some of the earliest iterations of guitar amplifiers. They were essentially modified radio circuits. I mean, that was really all that they had at that point. So oftentimes if you open an old radio or an old television, anything that projected sound, the circuits that did the sound were pretty similar uh, um, from one to the other. So, so when it came time to build these guitar amplifiers, Leo Fender, Rickenbacker, a few other the guitar companies that were around, they kind of leaned on those early radio circuits to design their amplifiers. So a lot of these early amps had no more than one, maybe two knobs total, and it was simple. It was a volume knob and maybe a tone knob. And generally the way they worked is the more you turn the tone up, the I mean, not just brighter, but the bigger and louder these amps got. That's just kind of how the circuit worked. So if you ever run into an old Fender amp or an old Rickenbacker amp or something from that era, generally you just turn the tone knob as high up as you can go. That way you'll get the most sound out of the amp and it really opens up and sounds the most like a clear guitar sound. But uh, over time, as technology advanced, speakers got better, tubes got better, and then most of all, just the demand from guitar players for more from their amplifiers, uh, different features started to be implemented. Uh, not just bigger speakers, but more knobs, more options. And the way that panned out is the form of an EQ section. A lot of amps started taking on not just treble, or bass, but they even had middle knobs, they had presence knobs. One of the most iconic amplifiers were the early Fender Tweed amplifiers. They were called Tweed amps because truly, they were covered in tweed material like an old suitcase. They're a much less refined, much less uh, clear sounding amp than we're maybe used to these days, but they have a really signature biting a uh, woody tone that still gets used on lots of records. Towards the end of the Tweed Amp era, tremolo started being incorporated into a lot of different amplifiers. It was the earliest effect that guitar players really had access to, and a lot of Supros, a lot of Valco-produced amps, a lot of Dan Electro amps, a lot of early amplifiers started implementing tremolo into their circuits. So oftentimes you'll see an amp with volume, tone, and also a tremolo circuit. Leaving the 1950s, the 1960s was Fender's blackface era of guitar amplifiers. That's when the circuits got a little more refined. Uh, we started seeing things like EQ being uh, available as options on amplifiers. They had treble, middle, and bass controls. Uh, that was also the earliest period of reverb being implemented on guitar amplifiers. Spring reverb was an effect that was added to these amps. A lot of these Fender amps incorporated tremolo and reverb effects built into the amp. And those two effects alone have really helped define the sound of the electric guitar. Around this same time, companies like Vox and Marshall, British companies, started building amps across the pond. Uh, these amps were initially pretty similar to the Fender circuits that we all knew and loved. Uh, especially Marshall starting with truly just a copy of the Fender Bassman circuit. But because they were using their own British made parts uh, and a few other factors, they started to develop their own signature sound. Um, after that, guitar was really becoming a forefront uh, as far as a lead instrument in bands. Rock and roll was a thing and lead guitar players like Clapton and Jimmy Page were really starting to take the scene. And the demand for guitar players to be heard in large venues and large stadiums, you know, these guitar-based rock and roll bands, that demand was met with the need for larger amplifiers. That's where the era, when you see large Marshall stacks or bigger and bigger amplifiers, that's what that was for. The, the PA technology at the time wasn't really as advanced, so they couldn't necessarily put a microphone in front of a small amp the way we do now. So the best way to fill a stadium was to put a stadium level of uh, sound from these guitar amplifiers. So that was the era of huge Marshall stacks. But it wasn't until the late 1970s and early 80s that the advancement of solid state guitar amplifiers really took shape. The advantages of solid state was that there were no tubes. Tubes, a lot like light bulbs, burn out over time. They wear and they, they don't sound as good. And you know they're clunkier to work with, they're delicate. But solid state amps use transistors, which are small, they're pretty resilient. The idea was that these solid state amplifiers would be more reliable, cleaner, 
brighter, all around better amplifiers. While solid state amplifiers didn't really catch on as the end all be all of guitar amplifiers, they've held their place as really loud and clean sounding guitar amplifiers that players can depend on, especially when they don't necessarily have a large budget. So where does all this leave us in 2019? Uh, obviously, as you can see, just by the small selection behind me, the options for guitar amplifiers are pretty much endless. Nowadays, we have boutique builders building their own versions of these classic circuits, and boutique amps have started to take on their own role in the guitar market. But before you get too overwhelmed, uh, the takeaway here should be that despite there being so many options in amplifiers, be it the size, be it tube versus solid state, be it lots of EQ knobs or just a volume and tone. The lesson here is that they're all actually pretty similar. What's important is how you use them and how you dial them in, which is what we're gonna dive into in this next video. If you enjoyed this lesson, check out Pickup Music. We have hundreds of lessons across all styles and from the world's top guitar players. You can start your free 14-day trial today. I'll see you there.